Hello, Yates County and beyond. Welcome back to another episode of Invasive Species Friday. Through this short weekly podcast, we at the Yates CCE hope to bring you information about the invasive species you may see around this county. This week, we're having twice the fun with two very similar mussels. Without further ado, we're off to the substrate with this week's invasives, zebra and quagga mussels. Bivalves are aquatic invertebrates with two calcified exoskeletons, or shells, of equal size that are connected by a hinge. Oysters, clams, mussels, and scallops all fall into this class. Unlike scallops, whose shells are relatively round in shape, mussels have elongated and asymmetrical shells. Zebra mussels are D-shaped, between a quarter of an inch to an inch and a half long, and have a flat underside, allowing them to remain upright on the ventral side. They have alternating light and dark stripes that sometimes zigzag across their shells. Quagga mussels look very similar, but their corners are more rounded and will tip over if placed on the ventral side. They are fingernail sized and have dark concentric circles that fade towards the hinge. Both mussels were introduced into the Great Lakes by contaminated ballast water. Zebra mussels were discovered in Lake St. Clair in 1986, and quagga mussels were discovered in Lake Erie three years later. Originally from Eastern Europe, both mussels have been confirmed in 15 states. Zebra mussels have been found in at least 16 additional states as well, while quagga mussels have been confirmed in four other states. Quaggas have also been reported in at least 23 counties in New York, while zebras are in at least 44 counties. Both mussels are prolific filter feeders, meaning they eat little bits of material they filter out of the water with a specialized organ. They dramatically decrease the available food for native aquatic animals while also increasing the clarity of their freshwater habitats, which makes it easier for predators to spot prey. Additionally, the pollutants they filter from their surroundings collect and build up in the mussels, harming the wildlife that eat these bivalves. Unlike many invasives, there are predators that can help control the mussels, but they breed at a much higher rate than they're consumed, so they spread quickly. Both types of mussels have very similar reproductive cycles. After the eggs hatch, the mussels spend about four weeks as a planktonic larval stage. During this time, they're microscopic and typically move with the water flow. When they reach the juvenile stage, they settle to the bottom of the water body in search of a suitable substrate to attach to. Zebra mussels can reach depths of 50 feet, while quagga mussels can go much deeper. Neither are too picky about the surface, colonizing on both hard and soft substrates. They attach their chosen surface by thread-like structures called byssus. After reaching maturity around two years old, a single female can produce up to a million eggs per year. As they can live up to nine years, each individual can result in millions of offspring. In addition to outcompeting other species and altering water quality, these mussels can smother other mollusks by attaching to them directly, impeding their ability to feed. When they colonize, they can completely cover a surface, which is called biofouling, and there have been numerous instances where these mussels have blocked water intake pipes for power plants. If they encrust other equipment, like boat motors and hulls, it reduces the performance and efficiency of these machines. Biofouling is a costly repair for anyone involved. Finally, the mussels are sharp and every year cause serious injury to unsuspecting swimmers who step on them. When mussels are established, there is very little that can be done. They can be mechanically removed, but that's time-consuming and expensive. In closed systems like water treatment plants, there are chemical, thermal, electric, and biological controls, but those are not an option in most water bodies. While these invasives can spread just by the water flow, they are frequently spread by humans. The larval stage can easily get transported in wet fishing and boating equipment. The juvenile and mature stages can attach to boats and gear and survive a few days out of the water. When the boat is moved to another water body, the mussel can then detach and start a new infestation. It's vital that precautions are taken when recreating in an area that has either of these invasive species. Clean, drain, and dry your boat and any other aquatic equipment when you're done in an area. This simple and effective procedure can help prevent the spread of zebra and quagga mussels, as well as any other aquatic invasives. Visit StopAquaticHitchhikers.org to learn more. As always, if you find these or any other invasive species on your adventures, please report it to IMAP Invasives. And with that, we reach the end of this week's episode of Invasive Species Friday. Next week, we're in the woodlands with a tasty-sounding shrub. 
Until then, we at the Yates County CCE thank you for tuning in and supporting our fight against invasive species in Yates County.